Hello everyone and welcome to this month's Overton Audio's podcast. My name is Connor Chadwick. And I'm Daniel Patton. And on today's podcast we'll be talking with Luke Newman on the 7th anniversary of DW2012 as well as a special. And I will be talking to Dave Edwards, uh, producer on Time Traveller, about the Time Traveller volume that's coming out this month. Indeed. So tell mm. me, Chatters, how, uh, how have you been this this month, my friend? Um, a bit on edge, if I'm completely honest. I think the world has, mate. <laughs> well, I'm I'm not I'm. It's not for COVID reasons. Um, I've not really specified this too much, but I'm in the middle of getting a place. Oh, like, 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 move, like hopefully moving soon. I'm not too sure when, but um, it, it, it's it's taken a while due to COVID to be able to get anything sorted, um, because you know there's all these regulations and guidelines and everything like that. Yes. <laughs> so it's taken a really long time and been very stressful, but we look like we're coming out. Well, we thought we were coming out at the end of it. Well, until Boris made his new announcement. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, I mean that's something I, jo- I joked about, uh, which was you can't visit another household. But what if it becomes yours? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you can't yeah. visit another one. But what, what, what if it will be yours one day? You uh, know what I mean? So, so maybe that's just a, just a big loophole around the whole new regulations that you can visit our property, but you, but you need to, you need to purchase it first. <laughs> Well, yeah, or <laughs> or just rent. Yeah, you need to. Well, either way, it's got to be a home, a place where you're living. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we got that going on in my life. Um, what about you? I'm. I I don't know if we could, if people can tell with my voice. Uh, I'm just very clogged up. I've I've got a. I, I'm I'm finding a bit of a cold at the moment. It's just a regular a cold. Seasonal cold. A seasonal cold. So the the seasons are changing at the moment, and uh, currently my my body's hating it. So. Mm. Yeah, because um, I've had a similar thing. I'm recovering from it. I can't really tell if I sound nasally, but there are some times when I reply to people, and I'm like, oh, I, I've really sound nasally there. But I can't really tell, personally. Um, but I, I, I had a really sore throat the other day, and um, I also had a really sniffly nose. It's just the nose that's remained. So I think it's a little... I think it is a seasonal thing, because it was, what was it, three days ago? It was when autumn on the calendar technically started. Yeah. And I was like, as soon as all of them hit, I was like, got a cold. <laughs> yeah. Just, just yeah. got a cold. Well, that's, um, the thing. well, that's the thing as well. Um, I've been kind of glad that it's happened at a time where I'm not back at work until the following Monday, um, because I got it on Wednesday. Because if I showed up all groggy and everything, people are freaking out these days about even en- just anything. Yeah, I- I'm staying indoors purely because I just don't want people freaking out. People freaking out. I mean, I think... Yeah. Have the cough, a cough, or I'd be, I'd be a sneeze, sneezy, or, or, or like have this. Plus, plus, as well as that, when you're feeling this way, you're you're a little bit immune, any well, not immune, so you're a little bit vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, you're anyway, susceptible, so. susceptible to the virus. So, it's, yeah, uh, I keep myself you. safe, and I haven't really been going out and seeing family besides the families lived here. And whenever yeah. I do go out, I always wear a mask anyway, so hmm, I'll be good. fine. Um, yeah. th- th- this cold actually started because I was I um. I lit it, lit up a scented candle, and uh, I didn't know it actually was burning something in, in my room. And then there was smoke in my room. I had to let, I had to open my windows overnight. I thought, Hang on. You know, are if, you I, saying that you nearly burned down your room? No, <laughs> <laughs> because you're saying that you lit the candle, you couldn't tell if it was on, and then suddenly your room was filled with smoke. <laughs> Just a little bit of smoke. I'm not saying, like I'm not saying overwhelming <laughs> amount of smoke. Just a little, this it was, it was a small, small, small fire that might have started <laughs> that I that I quickly uh, extinguished. It, it extinguished and it 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 and it put some uh, it put some smoke in my room and I had to uh, I had to vent out the room so I had both. My windows opens, but because it was very cold night, it was, it was freezing. But I thought to myself, you know, if I tuck in bed really nice and warm, I'll, I'll be fine. No, I wasn't. I woke up with the worst cold I've ever had. Yeah, spoiler alert: you weren't fine. <laughs> spoiler alert: we're not. It's not fine. Do not recommend. If you're going to start a start a fire, kids, just just don't, don't just don't start fires. <laughs> yeah, don't don't fill your room with smoke and then go to sleep. That's a very bad thing to do. <laughs> It's funny that because I had to turn on the heater today because we live in a farmhouse where um, they're single glazing. I turned on the heater, but it hasn't been on in about a, well, in about maybe 
eight, nine months. Yeah. When I turned it on, all the metal started creating this burning smell in my room, and I'm like, this is not good. But the difference is, I turned it off and opened a window. You and did you please tell me you didn't leave the candle burning? No, no, no. I, I never left the room. It's just because I. It's just because I was cleaning my room, and I I thought, okay, I could smell so, something. Uh, it's just it's just the, the it's just because I work from home, so, so obviously there's a bit of bo in the in the room. So if I I I, I let us send a candle to extinguish these these odors, but I nearly extinguished <laughs> the house. <laughs> <laughs> what, rather than rather than discover the source of the odor, you're like, I'll burn it out. <laughs> no, it's because it's a damn carpet. Is it like I've had this carpet for like twenty years, so it's it's this damn carpet. Hoover it then. I have hoovered it. It's it's not. It, it needs replacing, sir. Clean it. You can't do anything. Don't light a candle and go. Mm, the fire will extinguish this. <laughs> Anyway, I think we're going far too much about about about, about this little about subject. A potent- no, 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 no. There's a lot to unpack, Dan. That's why we've got. <laughs> there's a lot to unpack about this. You, the, the carpet smelt funny. So instead of instead of getting like anything to wash it, you decided lighting a candle. No, I, um, I didn't try washing it. I, I I have tried washing it before, but it just it doesn't really work. So I thought, you know, I I. I um, and so I thought, I'll let us in the candle. That's just so I can get through, uh, through work. And then I didn't realize I, I, where I said it. I said it's, uh, in one of the drawers, uh, in one of the drawers. And because of the heat, it, it set a little bit of a fire. What? Hang on. So what? What? Hang on. Sorry, I, I must have. Uh, what part of your room caught fire? Uh, one of the shelves in, in, in the corner. What's the shelf made of? Wood. How, um, how hot was that candle that it set a wooden shelf? Probably that. I mean, how old is this wooden shelf? Is it fairly new or old? It's it's, it's, a, it's an old shelf. I mean, either way, you know, they say that with age comes strength. So, um, how uh, and plus. Was it broken or chipped in any way? Like, did it have any like scuffed edges that could catch the little bit of light? Or was it all smooth? I'm trying to think, it like it's just. just you're in the, I, you're, I mean, I mean, right. I mean, as of recording, you're in the same room as the shelf right now. Well, I mean, it was stacked on top of things, so the flame there was open flame on the t- on the roof of that shelf. So yes, it was there. There was the flame was touching the roof of the shelf. So that, that okay. That, <laughs> and so far, from what I'm aware of this story. Sorry, viewers, for getting so distracted, but I like to think that we're all like we're all trying to be our little detectives here. So, rather than did how did did you extinguish the fire to the shelf, or did you think the window would do it? No, I extinguished the fire first, but that that's what caused <laughs> caused the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> it wasn't the bright dying moment. Okay, it wasn't it wasn't the <laughs> brightest moment of my life. Like I, I, I've been living. <laughs> I, I have lived by myself independently for three years. I've never had this happen to me before. Before, <laughs> I'm usually a lot wiser than this. I promise. <laughs> Please tell me. I, that. I will. Pr- pr- I will say this is pr- probably the, the, the most stupid thing I've ever did. I just imagine you sat at your computer doing some editing or work or whatever, and then you turn around and your shelf's just on fire. <laughs> Imagine you just spew casually, just I do a mouse, and I was like, "Oh, four! I mean five! I mean fire!" Yeah, <laughs> God. Right. Anyway, uh, moving and on. I wrote an just email nearly, about it. We've just spent nearly ten minutes on the subject of how you nearly caught your house on fire. Um, ha- happy seventh anniversary to DW twenty twelve. Happy seventh anniversary to DW twenty twelve. I nearly set my house on fire for you. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but like you, when did you, when, when did you come into it again? You were well, you were twenty fourteen, weren't you? Technically, no, twenty thirteen. I was there since the beginning. Because well, I can was that the same year as the special that shall not be named. What special that shall not? And I'll find like can, can the, we just the special? Oh no, 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 no! I've been I've been in DW twenty twelve since the beginning because I I did the VFX for the for mm. first. Just the first for the very beginning, and I was in the, I was in the original fiftieth mm. via green screen. Yes, 
but I'm still thinking about that special at the moment. <laughs> and knowing that I have it. <laughs> you you have the power to keep it uh, keep it, keep it under wraps, Chatters. I might include an audio segment in this. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how how do you feel about the fact it's seven years old? And it, it might, I mean, that's the thing. I, I was I've been aware of it. Aware, like when I first knew about DW in 2012, it was when the trailers for Series Two were coming out. So I've I've known of it for six years and been a part of it for well two. It's just seven years ago. I was 2014. Where was I seven years ago? You were in I, Ireland. I was here. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Um. Yeah, but we're, we're, I'm just trying to think. Like, where was I in my life at that point? Like, uh, I, I think I just finished secondary school. I was going into college, and I was doing a media course, and and I have graduate university with a degree in film, and that's that. That's where seven years has taken me, and I, and and this is the and DW twenty twelve has I that has been a constant throughout that journey as well. Mm. And of course, I don't think it's any secret anyway. Could be mentioned this very early on in the podcast, but. You've you're you're also doing the story for your doctor that you planned five years ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all been it's all been just constant, you know. Like it, it, everything has just sort of been working out in this way, and I don't know, man. Mm. It's just it's just it's been it, it, it's. It's just weird, weird, weird to think we we I didn't think we'd still be making films seven years on and I think by the time we made that original first series when I was doing VFX for Luke I didn't think we were going to be as close as friends as we turned out to be I didn't think that cameo in the original Eternal Darkness was going to become a full-fledged uh, starring role in the, in the, oh, in the oh, remaster oh, so that was, that, that was originally just meant to be a nice little cameo yeah yeah, yeah. it was just a nice wee cameo and I, I filmed that on green screen and I, I went to the, to the woods that's next door to me and I just record that and that's me done and but that that role got significantly bigger in the remaster mm. uh, well, you were there i was there i was <laughs> I, I, I i i upgraded <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's just we i gained a lot of friends from this um i got to collaborate with some really cool projects over this and it's been a it's been a good seven years i'd say yeah it's been a good seven years there's been a few uh, been a few uh trips and falls along the way, but I think looking back on it, that that was a test of strength of the team and to overall, I think uh just we've done very good in these last seven years. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I've got much to say because I mean, I we do these podcasts every every month, so I say a lot. <laughs> it's been two years for me now. Two years and I think two months now roughly and two years since series two started from of which was the proper integration of the cravat doctor into yeah. this universe and what's nice is is that the like I, it's been a nice slow and steady audience growth yeah because um I, I i feel like i probably would have got overwhelmed if everyone showed up at once i mean i wouldn't it's not that i wouldn't be grateful it's just i'd be like ah. Oh. So much to do, so much to say. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. But yeah, yeah. um, I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed being a part of it. I've got to meet uh Luke at the uh, Christmas gathering properly. We'd already been speaking anyway. He'd been we he'd been one one of the audios in twenty eighteen already. Oh. Speaking of which, <laughs> uh, Luke is in a new audio for the seventh anniversary. Yeah. Um, which as of recording this is in a couple of days, but um. I um, recorded a little segment for the podcast with him. Shall we have a, li- a little listen to that? Of course, yeah. Overton Audios presents... We see into your mind, Doctor. We know your life is ending. Things will only go bad for you if you wish them to. But I can't tell you that knowledge. Assailants, they must be destroyed. You will surrender immediately. You must become like us. Uh, oh dear. I think I've strayed a bit too far into my future. I wasn't intending to be pulled into a dangerous situation. I know the consequences and the risks. Oh. 
Well, this is awkward. You're the doctor, I assume. So, um, we're back with uh, Luke Newman. Hello, Luke. Hello, Connor. How are you? I am as good as one can be. Yes, um, as, as of recording, which is the middle of September, Birmingham's been uh, put into another... Is it is it a full lockdown or is it just like a mini lockdown where you can't see certain people? Uh, I think I didn't... Mm, I'd say it's a mini lockdown. We can't basically uh, visit other households at all. <laughs> I saw something online about yeah, that. Yeah, but, um, but we can on... go to work and <laughs> and go to bars and pubs and restaurants. That's fine, but we can't meet our friends or family. Yeah, I saw that. I, I don't know where it was. I think it was on Twitter or something. But um, I saw it was from a website called Birmingham Live, I think. Yeah, um, that's it, yeah. It was somebody asking, I plan on staying at my parents next weekend. Am I allowed to do that? And the response was, no, but if you want, you can meet them in London at a restaurant or a park. And I'm like, that doesn't... <laughs> That's not at all helpful at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't make any sense. There's there's lots of loopholes in it. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the the thinking would be that we've done it once. Surely we know what we did wrong last, like last time, and would we'll do better. But it just seems like, well, it worked last time. Let's just yeah. try it again. Well, with last time it was a full lockdown, so no one went to work or pubs or mm. bars. But now they've, they've let that happen. It's like, okay, this is just a. The government likes money, and they, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they'd exactly rather you spend say. money than go and see, you know, your, your family yeah. or friends. But it's that whole, it's that whole eat out to help out, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, that so right? that's the thing. Like August, they were telling us, "Oh, everyone, go out, go and spend money in restaurants." Then the next month, everyone stay indoors. We're in lockdown. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen like, a lot of a lot of people have been blaming young people for that, and I just thought, yeah. I mean, yeah. why advertise it? Like, literally, all the advertisers, when you look at it, it says eat out to help out. It's young people buying food and smiling and being happy. Yeah. So it's well, obvious that's who thing, it's like, I think me and Meg went out once for the eat out to help out. Hmm. Just once, that was it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't... When was the last time I met a friend now? I might have met Pete, Pete Adams. Uh, the young doctor. The, yeah, the young doctor. Oh. I met, I met, I met him for like a, just a brief bit of lunch, so, a social distance lunch at King's Cross when I'd just coming back from work. Yeah, because the thing is, I mean, I haven't stopped working at all. I, 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 I have not. I've been working through lockdown fully, and I've been every, and this literally was by complete coincidence. But every ten days, we were going back into London, and that also happens to be the quarantine period. Yeah. <laughs> so like. Wow. I mean, huh. it, we didn't intend it that way. It was just, you know, you've got most construction sites were shutting down. Um, again, for those who do not know, I work in construction. <laughs> but um, I most of them were not... Um, well, most of them did sort of shut down for about three weeks, but they had to go into, like, social distance stuff because yeah. ins- insurance and everything for, like, there's millions that go into those building sites. Yeah, that if you I stop it, you're you're losing money per week. Yeah, and it's like a lot of money as well. Oh yeah, massively. <laughs> so if we, if if they weren't stopping the company, I, the company I work for, we do con- compliance and check that the building is built properly so that people don't die. Or to put it, maybe not, maybe put it a little bit more with a shock value that we don't have another Grenfell, basically. Yeah. Um, and if we don't do that, it affects us rather than them. Yeah, because they'll they'll just get someone else to do it, and we won't be having any work. So that's it. <laughs> I was just having a very odd work period. I wasn't really like uh, not working, <laughs> so it was it's really odd for me when people um well you know when people talk about not working, and I'm like I, I've not technically experienced a full lockdown. <laughs> yeah, I mean I was quite lucky that um because I had asthma, like I classed as a um a vulnerable colleague. Oh, right. So my my work were like you've got asthma, um, you're entitled to have twelve weeks off full pay. I was like, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> I was like, I could do so much in this time, and then I ended um, up rebuilding the TARDIS. I was about to say, and you rebuilt which the TARDIS was, in that time. Yeah, which I wasn't even intending to do. <laughs> no, wasn't it? Wasn't it just you were making it taller so I could get in? <laughs> wasn't that it? <laughs> Literally, the the only thing I was meant to do was just replace the walls and put the new hexagons on. And then I ended up just rebuilding the whole bloody thing and making the box taller, yeah. 
Yeah, I remember. I remember like try, watching. I can only imagine what it looked like. Like last December when I came over, I can only imagine what it looked like. Me trying to get in. Yeah, it looked a bit of a struggle. Like it was a lot of ducking. <laughs> well, that's the thing as well. Um, I've um, I've gone on a bit of a because of this whole saving up to move out and everything. Yeah. Um, I've gone on a huge health kick and I've lost two stone. Oh wow. And also, as well as that, when when it comes to um, uh, any visual appearances, I want to be able to look at myself and be happy. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's great. And, that's great. So yeah, hopefully, I'll be able to get through the doors without having to breathe in as well. Ah. But huh. um, yeah, I, I I always judge my um, my weight on how well the doctor costume fits oh, me. I've been quite lucky that like the red coat still fits. Like nothing happened in the space of seven years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it was a tailored coat, and it like it fits quite snug. I think there's a little bit of room in there, mm. a little bit of give. But uh, no, I was quite surprised that the entire outfit still fits, even the trousers. Oh, that's good. That's lucky. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I only had my 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 doctor's coat is literally just well. I mean, you've met me. That's just my normal coat, <laughs> but it just so happens to match the cravat and waistcoat nicely. Yeah, thought. like I remember when you came for the Christmas meal and you was wearing your doctor's coat and you were like, "All I had to do is bring a cravat and I've got the outfit." <laughs> yeah, well, luckily, luckily because it was winter, I had my scarf. So when we were taking the photos, I went, "I've just got a scarf on. That's all. That's yeah, all. It's just yeah. it, like they had to <laughs> pull the coat closed, maybe like, yeah, it's I'm wearing. A, there is a cravat under this. <laughs> yeah, just get Dan to Photoshop it and it'll be fine. <laughs> he has he has done that before. When I've gone, oh, but I really like this pose of me, but I'm not wearing the right colour. And he goes, "Leave it with me." Yeah, I remember like when I first when I first got my coat ordered, um, and the idea was was that I was gonna have a different color coat, the same coat but in different colors every season. All oh, right. So the idea was season two would have the blue variant, season three would be green, and I think season four would have been black. Yeah. Um, okay. And I was said Dan, I was like, I don't just want to pay the money to see how it works. I was like, could you like somehow change the color of my coat? Mm. So Dan did this test where you could see my coat in the green and the coat yeah. in the blue. And it looked really nice in blue. But then I just I couldn't justify the amount of money I paid for it another yeah. three times. <laughs> I wonder what your doctor's name would have been then. Yeah, because that's the I was never going to be called a little red doctor. Mm. It was just a name that uh, Rob gave me in the 50th, um, the Quiff Doctor. He he just sort of gave it to me. He said, "Oh, you should keep you should keep it." You know, the little red doctor. And I was like, "No, because it won't make sense when I get to series two. <laughs> and then, and, yeah, just... I was I wasn't gonna keep it. That's why I bought the blue coat. But it was only until mm. halfway through series two. That's when I kind of thought, you know, I missed the red. I think the little red doctor is my look. And then that's when I adopted the name because Jess says it in um series two, uh, Night of the Scarecrow. Oh, yeah. uh, she says the little red doctor. That's the first time that the uh, the doctor gets announced as the little red doctor. Nice. So that I was mean... that was the moment when I was I decided, yeah, okay, that's when I'll be called the little red doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've um, I don't know if is there any other times where or like where other doctors have had their names like literally given to them in that way, or is it just you? So I'm thinking. I'm not oh, sure, really. Because um, obviously, I, what what I like as well is it's almost come across as like each name referring to each doctor is kind of given by the doctor. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it's like, oh yeah, it's the Irish one. Oh yeah, it's the blonde one. You know, like as yeah. if he's, as if like moments and like phases. Like oh yeah, that phase. You know, yeah, <laughs> that sort yeah. of thing. I mean, like it's like in the remastered of the fiftieth, I decided to let George be the one who named my doctor. And that's oh, yeah. where my doctor got the idea from. Like when George says, you know, oh, the little red doctor. And he's like, oh, little red doctor. I like that. And he was yeah. like, well, I can't remember what incarnation we are, so we might as well run off nicknames. So George is technically like the doctor who starts the whole nickname thing. Mm. <laughs> you do recognise me. Yes, of course. You're the little red one. How could I forget you? Huh, well, that's flattering to say the least. Now, why are you here? The amount of questions... I get from people who can't seem to get it out of you <laughs> going, what incarnation are you? And I'm like, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. That's the point. <laughs> it's the point. Yeah, like, but like, it's like I said before, I said in um, an Instagram live is that if I turn around and said the 34th Doctor, for example, 
Um, mm. If I said I was that incarnation, would it really matter? Because you don't know the other Doctors before, between 13 and the 34. You don't know those Doctors, well, yeah, so um, there's no context there, so it adds no gravity to it. Well, yeah, because that's, that, that's another issue that I was talking to Dan about, which is the young Doctor is meant to be 6,000 years old. The current Doctor is 2,000. and then, But then Dan is saying that he's 30,000. <laughs> and then I'm saying I'm fifty thousand, yeah. <laughs> but that's because of the there's like that gap, isn't there, between when the doctor the doctor becomes atoms and he's like that. Yeah. For 20, he's like that for twenty thousand years. That's but, it. Yeah. But then, yeah. um, but then Dan said, "Well, in all fairness, I've only said that number because he's forgotten and he's just taken a wild guess." And I'm yeah. like, in that case, that's probably what I've done in that case too. If I've said if the if Irish has always said. 30,000, just add 20,000 on it and go, oh, it must be that then. Yeah, but then I suppose if you look at it with the whole timeless child kind of thing as well, mm. because there's that many doctors before Hartnell, is the doctor even 2,000 years old at Jodie? No, but look, here's the thing. Like, the, like I honestly, oh, God, you've set me off. Um, <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> I've, I've got, um, I've got, a pe- I know that people, like, oh, God, people have got, people, people have got, their own theories about if the timeless child is technically the doctor or not. My my feeling on it is I class them as two different people in the same way that the doctor classed the war doctor as someone else, or, or yeah. they class the Valiard as someone else. I I even though it's not been explicitly said what was done, the doctor did have a regeneration limit at some point, which means something was done to them, making them time lord. Yeah. Um, they may have been given unlimited regenerations back, but I like my feeling is it's so far back in Gallifrey's history <clears throat> that nobody probably knows about this. Like literally, yeah. like, it's so far back that the only people who would have known are probably Rassilon, Omega, and Tectayun, and they looked at him and then in the show's past and gone, "Who are you?" <laughs> you know? yeah like it's so far back in the past that yeah. nobody probably even knows where it came from and just literally believe the myth so that's it, yeah i class it as because people are you know thinking the doctor's not a demigod that's not who they're supposed to be because they, they technically did that story with moffat where the you know the doctor was uh seen as someone to be feared yeah which that's which, it. which i think a great thing to look at especially like when you're coming up to the 50th year you know you're thinking well the doctor's just been Travelling a lot, how does nobody know him? But the point is, they do. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that affects anything because the timeless child and the doctor are two different people. The doc, if you really go into and I and and as you know, I have gone into my continuity here. Um, the, do, <laughs> the, the doctor comes from a family who hate him, who think of him as like the like literally someone who doesn't belong. And yeah, that's why Susan liked him so much. Because she was like him, whereas everybody else just wanted to stick to their own houses. That's it, was, it, it yeah. It was like yeah. a house. It was like a house-based system, like the house of. Well, I don't know what his surname was, but like, <laughs> let's say, let's say Theta Sigma. Why not? Um, it was the house of Sigma, you know, and they were very much about. It was all about respect, very kind of old tradition, and the Doctor kind of represents breaking the mold, and which is kind of what we all want. But yeah. the timeless child was very much something different so i class them as two different things really even though they're part of part of the doctor it's technically something else that's yeah, that's yeah, how i've that's how sense. i've grown yeah that's how i've grown to live with it <laughs> yeah it's like that whole thing about the whole oh the the new master destroys missy's redemption arc um, yeah i think i talked to meg about this briefly which was i see the missy redemption arc as a drug addiction, but an addict trying to give up their addiction. Yeah, and that makes sense. and then yeah, and then it's building up throughout the whole series. And at the time, I didn't think there was much point to bring John Sim back. But with the context of Sasha Dewan's master, I thought, well, actually, in that series ten finale, Missy is so close to being good, and then her addiction shows up again, and she's yeah. literally jumping between the two because she wants to be better, but she's also addicted. It's like that whole thing about, like you you see it with you see, well, you see it in programs at least. I've not had any first hand experience experience with any drug addicts, but um, you see it in programs where people jump between the drug and but they still love the people they want to change for. 
Yeah. And ultimately, they make the right. Obviously, ultimately, Missy makes the decision to stand with the doctor, but her addiction literally kills her. So ah. much so that when uh, when literally it consumes her again in a way, and that's why we get Sasha Dewan's master, and thus people wondering how Missy came back as Sasha Dewan's master. I've got it sorted as well. <laughs> there you go. Um, there you yeah. go. Chatters is on it. Yeah, because um, every, every time a Time Lord dies, their brain gets uploaded into the Matrix. She got uploaded, found the information about the Timeless Child. When she escaped the Matrix, she couldn't come back as Missy because she died. So it's Sasha Dewan's master. And then nobody knew it was the master. So that's how Gallifrey got wiped out so quickly is because nobody knew it was the master. Hmm. Ah. And there you go. That's my head cannon. <laughs> the amount, also, also, amount of people who have messaged me. I don't. Have you had any messages ever since the ending of Spyfall Part Two about how does this work now <laughs> with Gallifrey? Because remember, um, we, I, I've had it with the Timeless Child. I didn't have it much with Spyfall. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we we created a damage control group chat from that point on. <laughs> I going, remember, oh, yeah, just to see that message, like. Um, guys, we need to discuss. And I was like, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, I think we just said, well, to be honest, and even then it's easy enough to say, we're that far in the future. that Yeah, like can... Gallifrey's been destroyed and rebuilt so many times in the past. Yeah. Like, if you if you look, if you compare Gallifrey from, like, the new series to the classic, why does it look so different? Well, there's been wars, you know? It's been destroyed yeah. many times and rebuilt. Yeah. And in all fairness, didn't that kind of kind of happen in Fall of the Doctor, where like literally the entire planet was evacuated and people were displaced because they yeah. were trying to get away? So yeah, like that's something that's something that is going to take a while to fix, but we'll we'll come back again. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there is like a throwaway line in the uh, remaster of Series Three where the Doctor just like mentions the Gallifrey being rebuilt. For yeah. God knows how many times. It's just yeah. in case I do it again in future. <laughs> At least you've got something. Yeah, because I I remember that in the um in the original fiftieth, wasn't it that the little red doctor found Gallifrey and rebuilt it again? Wasn't? wasn't uh, that in it? in the original, um, Gallifrey was just destroyed. It was just like a wasteland of a planet. Mm. Um, and then the Valyard made this copy of it. Oh, okay. But then, when they brought Gallifrey back, that continuity got sort of, you know, kicked out. Yeah, pushed aside or delicately moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, yeah, <laughs> that, really, that really messed up with that continuity. But then again, in the new one, it's sort of been altered where, you know, it's just Gallifrey already is there. alive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably just safer just to say, it was always there. <laughs> Yeah, I think it might just be safer just to say nothing in future. Yeah. <laughs> just any planet that isn't your own, don't go into it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you just... mention Telos, just say Telos. Don't say, don't tell me about the current state of Telos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so does I, just... I don't want to know about current affairs. I, I, I just want... <laughs> Just let me know that they're from there and that they're so, not there now. <laughs> the tide just lands. Where are we, Doctor? Scarrow. Is that it? You're going to say anything else? We're just on Scarrow. It could be any point in time. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall we Shall we go to Earth in the time that's currently existing? Yes, why not? <laughs> <laughs> what year is it? I don't know. Just stop asking me questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I Again, I've also... I, I, that's, that, this is why I messaged you about this the other day. I had a lot of people going... You could do an order, Doctor Who audio about coronavirus, and I'm like, is this a bit? Would it be a bit distasteful if I were to turn around and do it right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, and it, and some somebody put forward an idea to me, like a whole story plan about how it was aliens. Oh wow! And I just ah. thought, mm, I don't think I don't. Uh, I think it's a very it's a very tricky subject. Um, yeah, I You're think like, it's I'm... one of them that it probably shouldn't be covered in Doctor Who. <laughs> no, well, that's the thing. That's something I'm wondering about, like. Because with the upcoming special, that will probably be set at the back half of 2020. <laughs> so yeah. it's a question of is it even canon? <laughs> like, are we gonna are like you know what I mean? Are they gonna reference anything? Or yeah, unless it's actually not set in 2020, that might be interesting. I I need to update uh, that DW 20, 2012 timeline that I've written up. <laughs> <laughs> like not like just saying just a little note in 2020 going ignore. 
it didn't <laughs> exist. It went 2019, 2021. Well, yeah, because I was talking to um, I was because obviously now obviously we know how series five episode one ended with them being stranded. I was like, as far as continuity goes, I believe this is set in September 2019. As that's when the movie was set, but yeah. um, but as well, I'm thinking, how long is he stranded for? <laughs> because then, around that, around a few months from that point, is when everything starts, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. So, I think I think with the, the movie, um, the regeneration scenes actually set at the start of 2019. Oh, because the movie spans over um, several years. Um, mm. Like when the doctor goes back and sees the brig, I think it's sort of the last half of twenty eighteen, and then when the doctor regenerates and picks, uh, drops Megan back on Earth, that's uh, twenty nineteen. I just put it so, all down as happening in the same period of time. The only the only reference I had from that movie was Meg holding a newspaper with the date on at oh, the beginning. Damn. So I was just like, it's that date. That is the date that the movie <laughs> happens on. <laughs> so, yeah. but. Literally, I'm, I, it took me. It took me five hours to watch the movie because I was writing down everything that happened. You think it lasts forever, life? You think it just keeps going on, but you never know how close the end is. Till one day it's over. I am the Doctor. This is my story. And this is how it ends. And now and I've got Dan going, do you want to go on Skype? I'm like, no, I'm keeping continuity here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to keep track. So I'm trying to mention dates here. Yeah. And they go, who said what? And then what happened as a result? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Now, uh, Series 5 is going to be set in 2019. And then there is a point where there's like a jump to 2020. Hmm. Yeah, it's just because how long Series 5 has taken to make... Um, it just makes sense We, we well. kind of like to keep as present as possible. Yeah, well, it makes sense, though, because it will also show a period of time, but then if you want to do any more short tales, you've got an open window there. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's plenty of gaps in the series for, like, mm. you know, whole other seasons to exist within. Yeah, because... Um, I don't think there's one... I think there's only a... There's only one episode, which is like a direct continuation of that last episode. Oh, okay. The rest of them is sort of like there's months gaps between each episode. Hmm. Yeah, well, I think between episode one and two, um, I think there's about a fortnight gap. Yeah, well, I get. Uh, I, 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 I assume that from like these short tales when you know Dom's on the. I think is he on like a recorder or a dictaphone or something. There's one where he says it's been ten days, and I'm like, oh okay. And so we're establishing. Yeah. yeah. I'm like I'm like writing down all these notes, going, okay, it's been ten days. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, I, I need to write it up with like the events that happened in the series four episodes that of, of my series, and yeah. I, and I finished those a year ago. I, I, I the thing is, I'm trying to keep it a bit more basic because otherwise you'll end up reading it for a fortnight and then realise well hang on I've got to go back now and find the period of time <laughs> like I remember when it was a year and a half ago Dom asked, Dom was like working on the basis of a potential story I don't know what it was for but he wanted to keep like the, the 30th century free <laughs> and I went and he went oh, Is there any, yeah. he said he said are there any stories that are happening in the 30th century and I went um, only the 29th and the 31st and he goes oh brilliant thank you <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like booking it it's like making a, an appointment yeah just booking a time slot in in yeah. a in the timeline <laughs> in a cent in a century is the, is the 30th century available uh, right now yes <laughs> yeah good. i mean i i will, i'd always want to do like an episode when the doctor lands and like he interrupts an adventure he's already on just sort of like he lands and he sees the six doctors. Like, oh, sorry, oh, this one's booked. You know, next one. Yeah. I'm just thinking, the doctor's been around for that that long, and he's been to sort of like so many time periods now. He's bound to run into himself one or, once or twice. Sorry. Leading up to Omega. Done that. You've done that. Well, hang on. So, so you must be regenerating. Yeah. How can you be so reckless? You don't remember this at all. Well, I do, vaguely. I am in your future. Yes, of course. The timelines aren't out of sync. You'll remember this because I was always going to have a peek. 
I find it like crazy because when I look at you, I think you're like the recent addition of the timeline. But in actual mm. fact, you've actually been around for quite some time. Yeah. It feels because... like you only joined like last year, but it's been like a few years. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I've I, I did I did the counting. I'm I've done fifty episodes so far. Oh wow! Which I'm I'm also <laughs> then I'm also very and I've said this to Dan. It's like Dan, I should stop soon. He goes, why? He goes, because Luke Luke did forty one. <laughs> oh. I've I've done more than anybody else. I need to stop. I'm not. I don't want. I because we sort of make jokes that I'm the Paul McGann of of this universe because he obviously had the he had the movie and then the little Minnesota to end his era but he never had anything in between and those are the big finish <laughs> audios and so that we've joked going that I've appeared now once visually <laughs> that yeah. I'm now officially the Paul McGann but yeah. then so you've got a Minnesota to go yeah <laughs> well, which will be your regeneration that, well yeah I mean, I, I, that's that's just a whole nother thing about like, okay, well, what, how do I go about that? <laughs> isn't it like there's already enough of us, isn't there? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, there's quite a few of us. Yeah, like how long's how, like how big is the next one going to be at the gathering? <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, we're going to need a bigger table. Yeah, a bigger the, tray. Yeah, it's going to be the restaurant eventually. <laughs> just bring every table together. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I've got a big enough tray for all this food. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be like a, a thousand pounds worth of food, just all of us there. Yeah, so many, so like, so many sharers. Yeah. We should, do, we should do another Christmas gathering, though. I don't know about this year. But... Oh, yeah. Like, we really wanted to do one this year, but it's just, I don't think it's going to be possible. No, like, I, I'm really, I'm really hope, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful because... Well, in all in all fairness, I'm not. I've I've not gone out much this year, so I yeah. need to get. I need to get out and about. But yeah, like, that's the thing. I I I got. I I've got no issue with like face masks or anything like that. I mean, sure, when it's a really hot day, I find them a bit of a bother. I need to get some air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me and Meg always do this thing that when you take off face masks, you act like you've had like a very hard day at work. You sort of like, ah, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you have gone for like a, t- a minute, you take off. So, oh gosh. Yeah, like what I do is I just I just sort of scratch my neck and then hook my thumb under the bottom of the of the face mask, leave it open, and just sort of go, <sighs> trying to get all the hot air out, and yeah. then and then just sort of breathe in to get all the air in, and then just close it again so that therefore yeah. it's always aiming down at me. Because <laughs> the amount I'm not, like so I find it funny the way that how at the beginning, if somebody walked in wearing a mask, they all got stared at. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, now, look at him wearing a mask, a dust yeah. mask of all things. Yeah, and now it's the complete opposite where if someone walks in, you're like, you're going to infect me. Get away from me. Yeah, like uh, me and Meg went up to Birmingham uh, a few days ago just before like, mm. the lockdown happened. And um, so many people are wearing masks. And I said to Meg, we should just like, when we see people not wearing masks, we should just clap and go, oh, hey, you're proud of yourself. We're getting locked <laughs> down for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. My 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 hometown, which I don't live in anymore, they they went viral for their beach being completely full. And then obviously Dan, when he when he lived in Bournemouth, that got completely like riddled with rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Um, I work so, like there was. I was a point where I was going. My, my my train was going through Croydon at one point, and I looked over the train station and saw loads of people just lining up for the train just. Wearing swimming trunks, and I'm just like, this is not the time uh, or the crazy, place. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it, I think it's, it's that kind of silliness of you know when you know when, I don't know if you've ever had this, but where people where if you if your doctor says oh you need to do this this and this to make yourself feel better and you think oh that's a bit much I don't need that and you go and then you do your own thing and sometimes you feel better after and you go see I know myself better. But yeah. people are doing that about a bloody pandemic. <laughs> That's the thing, like, you know, people are very sort of like, they think they know what's best. Like, mm. you know, the human race is very stubborn. You know, they just, they do their own thing and they think it's fine. But, you know, yeah, people are <clears> silly, <throat> you know. I'm glad I'm not one of them. Yeah, I've just... Like, I'm glad I'm a time lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However many lives we've got left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got an infinite amount of lives. And we're still wearing masks. <laughs> yeah. Like with as the production value has evolved and as everyone's changed, the 
as we as we were saying earlier, the the TARDIS has also changed quite a bit as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. the TARDIS is like one of those brooms. You know, when you replace the handle and replace the brush, but it's still the same yeah. broom. <laughs> it's yeah. one of those. So you know, we've replaced the console, replaced the console room, and replaced the whole box, but it's still the same TARDIS. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still kind of. Uh, does, does it almost, almost sort of? I mean, do you ever sometimes go? Oh, I'm gonna go. I want. I'm. I'm just gonna go and sit in the TARDIS for a bit. No. No, oh, <laughs> I was really hoping you'd say yes and go, yeah, yeah, sometimes it just feels like a second home. I was really hoping you'd go down that road. No, it's, I've spent that, mu- that much time in there that I'm so sick of being in the TARDIS. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, Happy anniversary. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like owning a TARDIS isn't as as fun and as great as what people think it is. You know, I suppose. I suppose it was probably... such a pain. I was like, oh god, this is not how I imagined this conversation going. Oh, I hate being in there. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, the only, my my first experience of it, and my only experience is when I walked in and went, God, it's freezing in here. Oh yeah, it does that. Did you did you put insulation in the walls finally? Uh, it had insulation in the walls back then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that that was it with ins- with insulation all in and everything, but uh I don't know, it's just it's one of those like when we're like, Oh yeah, we've got to do a tired scene and I'm there like, uh <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to well, It's it not so been... bad now because like the tides looks a lot nicer because it's got mm. refurbished. Yeah, it's, it's quite it's, nice. It's to a be bit in. more spacious too. Yeah, yeah, and then with the, the weather as well, it's quite nice. Yeah, but um, it's just when when you're in winter, it's just horrible to be in because it's just it is cold. Even though it's like insulated and soundproof, it's still cold. Mm. It could be colder, but it's still cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just imagining like, how how small was it originally when you first built it? Was it quite well, uh, cozy? The, the walls were five foot tall. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I'm imagining. I'm trying to imagine me. And in terms oh of like, yeah, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't fit. I'm six foot three. So yeah, you for would me... not have fit. I think I think you would be like your head against the roof. Quite yeah, easily. just like my my neck bent down. Like yes, doctor, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or would it would it's... have been like would have been like Lord of the Rings when Gandalf walks into the <laughs> into like the Hobbit home and he's having yeah. to crouch through doors. Yeah, you're just like oh, duck, duck, and I'll be like bloody Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This way, this way. It's just really like, uh, like head butting the rotor or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to, I got, I got to film in that TARDIS. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, you should see the new one. It's much better. That's good. I remember, yeah. I remember, like at one point, you and Meg watching me going, "You're taking it way too seriously." <laughs> so I was like, "You have to rehearse all of your lines for the whole scene, or we're restarting." <laughs> but like that's 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 how I was when I was making when I've made like Waterside in the background most of the yeah other, most of the other yeah. people, I, I used to I used to do it like uh, two to three lines at a time yeah um, like, which, I mean like nowadays we've sort of like adapted that kind of route now where it's like people will read through the whole scene and they'll keep reading it and reading then they'll do the, the lines and then we'll do the whole scene in one. Oh, but yeah. we'll we'll film the that scene like four or five times from different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's well, that's the thing is like, the other problem, of course, is not having two cameras. Yeah. You know, but, um, with me, it's either do the whole thing or do as much do at least do it in blocks. You know. Yeah, if we've got chunky lines, we normally do it in blocks because it's mm. not fair. Like, like you know, I'm like Dom, read this, and Dom's like. Ah! It's like half a page of dialogue, and it's like, yeah. uh, can we do it in sections? <laughs> yeah, just from like different angles and everything. Yeah, but we normally do one like we do like a wide, and then we do like a mid, and then we'll yeah. do like over the shoulders of each actor, mm. just to yeah. get like coverage of everything. So that that's obviously what what you what you're doing now. But was it was it? I mean, I suppose you were doing it quite differently back in the day. Oh yeah, back in the day, it was one shot wonder. <laughs> <laughs> it was one shot per line <laughs> and nine times out of ten we, the other person was holding the script up so we could read it <laughs> I miss those days to be, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, even though even though I'm like I would never go back to them I do also miss them just for that the novelty of it yeah yeah like I, I, I started making fan films back in 2007 wow. and I just I just <laughs> I, I, I just half the people who watched me back then I've got kids <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, uh, okay. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm quite lucky that everyone's still roughly in the same position as they were seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, I first... Has Dan ever told you about the evil doctor that he played back in 2014 for me? Uh, was that like the English doctor? That um, or was that a different doctor? No, no, no. This this was the visual cut, I think, the one that I released during lockdown. Oh the, yeah, I watched that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I he, saw that. Yeah. I I had to fight him to get that uploaded. He was like, I don't want to upload it. No, it it's fine. It's not canon. He goes, he goes, I don't care. <laughs> I don't want it on. <laughs> and I I can't remember how I persuaded him. But I persuaded him. <laughs> <laughs> you say, um, if you do this for me, Dan, I'll uh, I'll buy you some beers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love quiet. how like we have we have so many like um like drunk jokes towards Dan being Irish, but to be fair, he doesn't actually drink that much. <laughs> no, he doesn't. To be <laughs> it's honest, it's kind of like disappointing. <laughs> no, but in, in all fairness, um, when we were filming in London a few years ago, it wasn't for anything like Doctor Who related, but I got him this drink. He was playing like a and like a sort of gun for hire kind of character. Oh, so yeah. I, um, and we were filming around like London Bridge, like t- oh, sorry, Tower of London, Tower Bridge sort of way. Yeah. And there's this posh hotel there. Uh, it has like a ten pound drink called the Crown Jewels. Oh wow! <laughs> and it's a mixture of they stopped doing it because we went to go and find it again because when we wrapped for the final season of Water Sub, we went there to go and try and like down one, but. Dan, dr- Dan, Dan took a sip and went, oh, it's nice. And then I said, well, I joked to him and said, you have to down the whole thing for the uh, for the scene. <laughs> and he went, oh, okay. And he did that. And by the time we got to the next location, which was literally a 30-second walk, he'd gone <laughs> flush red and he couldn't walk straight anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, But he somehow remembered the lines. But <laughs> he was just, you'll, you'll see a difference. Like His character downed it, walked out, and then walks out and is drunk. <laughs> Yep, I'll 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 get that guy for you, and you know, he's just like hiccup again, swaying from side to side, just slow like. in his words, and just like, fix it in post. Yeah, <laughs> just dub everything. Mm. But when did you um, when did you uh, f- who, was Dan the first Doctor that got added to the, well, I suppose the roster? <laughs> was he or was he? Um, was... yeah, yeah, I think he was. Yeah, because like yeah. Dan. Dan worked on like Dawn of the Doctor with me, like so Dan's been there from the start. Yeah, he messaged me and said, I'll do you some visual effects for episode one. <laughs> Seven yeah. years later, he's still here. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, like it's a bit like Stockholm syndrome. He can't just he can't leave the prison. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> he's got too used he's got too used to the punishment. Yeah, he enjoys it really. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got I got him to do all the visual effects for me, and I was giving I gave him a visual effects list, and they had like a hundred and fifty visual effects shots. And I'm like, good luck. Yeah, I remember <laughs> giving him the list for the film, and like, oh, oh that yeah, guy. trust me. He he told me he told me about that. He was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he was like on Skype to me at the time, and he went, oh, I've just got the list, and I was like, oh, that's cool. But two hundred and what? <laughs> and I was like, good yeah. luck. He was oh. doing he was doing waterside at the same time for me, and he was like, "How am I going to do this? That's that's I've got like five hundred shots <laughs> for like across two projects." Yeah, and like one of them was like just like an epic battle. I was like, "Yeah, I went lasers and explosions everywhere." And Dan was yeah. just there, like, ah. I, he, I, he, he said to me, "Connor, can I have a break from waterside until I've done the film?" And I'm like, "Yes, you may." So, <laughs> and then about three months later, he carried on with mine. Ah, well done. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just trying to. I'm just like, who 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 came after Dan? Like, how, like how many were there? Because I know that that George, George came along quite just a bit. Bef- was it after me or be- before me? Um, uh, I feel like it was slightly before. Mm, so obviously, like, because I'm just trying to figure out whether or not, like, in terms of casting, I mean. Yeah, because I mean, like me and George. I mean, me and George. We we started filming series two like two years ago now. Oh. That's how long it's been. Yeah, it's been two oh. years. It's still not out. Have you finished it yet or I'm still working on it? Uh, all of George's parts are done for series two, yeah. Because <laughs> I was thinking, like, when. when, when I mean. <laughs> when, oh my god. <laughs> when, the, when, when are you planning to have that out then? Have you finished doing the remaster yet or is it still ongoing? Uh, we're still doing the remaster. Um, 
like I said, we a lot of people got the impression that we managed to do four years in the space of a year, like four seasons. And I was like, no, 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 we're not that far. Uh, uh. Uh, series one's done, obviously, because that's out. Thank yeah. goodness. Um, <laughs> series two is, I think we're just halfway through Destiny and Metal. Mm. And we've got some parts filmed for uh, Dark Times as well. Oh, God, that one. Are you going to, yeah. be, coming back, are you going to be coming back to London when, well, when you're able to? Uh, no, no, we're not going to set it in London just because it was so such a ball lake. I'd been up at night, and even though we're like we were there at three o'clock in the morning, there were buses. There's still buses. Oh yeah. I was like, what? It's London. It's three o'clock at night. Why yeah, I've they? been honestly a couple of years ago. I was out on a night out. And we were getting the bus back at about one or two in the morning. Yeah, I'm just like, do these buses ever stop? No. <laughs> so and so, and now they've got the and they've got the underground now. They've got the the tube line. That that's twenty four hours now. Really. Yeah, huh. it's only on certain lines though, but obviously they've got no tolerance on the uh, on the drunks. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, and we've got a few we've got a few scenes done for series three, and we've got a few bits done for series four. It's just kind of like we're back and forth doing different seasons at the minute. Yeah, um, I suppose well, I suppose like the main concentration, I suppose, because of the delay, will be series five when when you can. Yeah, yeah, Series 5's have been the priority. Like we said, we won't release Series 2 until Series 5 is done. Yeah. Um, but then again, like, with this current, like, you know, the current pandemic, it's like, uh, well, series half of Series 2 is done. Like, do we release it? Or do we just stick with doing Series 5 rather than dividing mm. Series 2? So, yeah, it's just one of them. I mean, Series 2 still got, like, a few pickup shots that are needed, so we'd still need to film some stuff. Yeah. So it's just kind of all over the place at the minute. Mm. I mean, like we don't think like because originally we wanted series five eight this year. That was the plan. We were gonna we were gonna pause the remastered series this year and just crack out series five for like, the whole year mm. and get it released sort of like end of the year. Um, but like we're, we're like Septem- late September now, and we normally wrap for filming in November because how cold it is. Yeah. Um, like getting Dom up. Dom doesn't really get up to Birmingham till about 11 and then we start filming by 12 but then sunsets at like oh, 4 oh I'd be on, like for me I, 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 <laughs> I, I'd I be like 7am come on move 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 or just yeah. or, or just get him down the night before and then wake him up violently like come on <laughs> we've got Doctor Who to make <laughs> yeah I mean I, I used to always get Dom to stay like stay over every few nights um, mm. because like we want to do like a late shoot and get loads done in like the TARDIS kind of thing but like I said, come November, like because we're at the stage now where we've all the tidy scenes are done for series five. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, and it's like, well, we well, the only thing we have to film is like exterior stuff and like um, like studio stuff and all that. But ideally, we're only going to have like four hours to film before it gets dark because when the clocks go back in like October. Well, yeah, exactly. You're you're going to lose daylight hours and that's just going to be impossible that's yeah. what i mean yeah so to be fair like, i don't see us getting back to series five this year it's looking to be like another like another bloody next year thing oh but then it also delays the remastered series and it delays everything else it's like yeah uh, yeah not fun well is that your official statement on the podcast <laughs> that's my official statement on this yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you've heard it you've heard it here first folks <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, like I say, like we want series five out, but mm. we don't want to set off anything than the best, you know. Yeah. Because like we did that a lot through series one to four, mm. and that's why it's getting remastered now because I'm not happy with it. Oh well, yeah, you know, like as a as a filmmaker and going forwards into that career, I need to make sure that what's online is my best work because it's oh, my yeah. portfolio. And our oh, portfolio oh yeah, a hundred percent. But there's a hundred percent. But like, no. <laughs> when when um, I've been on um, I've been on Skype to Dan. I've been sorting out like uncharted past bits and pieces. I'll hear him typing away, and I'm like, "Are you listening to me, Dan?" And he would be like, and he would just pause and go, "Luke's reshooting." And I'm like, "What? <laughs> Not again?" <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, is this ever going to come out? <laughs> it's really like, scary. there's a there's a scene in episode two, uh, which is set in a field, and I think it's been reshot four or five times now. Oh my god! 
Yeah, but I'm happy with the final. Do you, do you reckon you'll ever release like a special edition, like deleted scenes and alternate takes thing? <laughs> Alternative episodes of the same well, episode. Well, yeah, because I've been I've been looking at um some like classic Doctor Who episodes, and they've got classic like they've got like not classic, they've got um alternate openings where they shot things a bit differently, and then they reshot the opening for like there's like ones of like Caves of Androzani, for example, where the opening is completely different. Really? Wow. Yeah, and they, then they re- yeah they they reshot it because it didn't work in the edit. Yeah, and I just thought Luke, Luke's got an opportunity here to, but the problem is the the actual thing isn't out yet, <laughs> so he can't <laughs> yeah. show off the new take, the old yeah. takes. It's like spoiling. it's like episode three of series five. We had one idea that we was going to do with it, like the script was written and we filmed a few scenes, but I just mm. I wasn't happy with the script. I had second thoughts, so I rewrote the script and we reshot bits. And then again, I wasn't happy with the episode. I was like, mm, I'm just not, I'm not happy. I, I don't want to produce stuff that I'm not happy with. Well, no, exactly. That, that's yeah. the thing. Like, like a while ago, I used to, um, I used to just not sleep when I finished work. I used to finish work in the morning, have a coffee, have food, and then bam, straight onto serious stuff, whether it's filming or whatever. Mm. And I used to be awake for, I think the longest I was awake for was 33 hours straight. Oh and I was just, I, I wasn't functioning. <laughs> No, and that's the, when like Meg was like, "You really need to start sleeping." I was like, "I know, I know." <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think mine's a similar time because <laughs> um, there are those things where you get you get lost in editing and you realize, "Oh God, I should have gone to sleep five hours ago." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, like, editing and writing, like you look, you look, you, you turn on your computer at like eight o'clock in the, in in the evening, and mm. then you start typing. You got a paragraph. You look at the clock. What? It's five a.m. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm like for me, roughly, I'm, I'm always doing it per, when I'm when I'm editing the audits. I always have to do it per page and work out. Okay, okay, I'll try and do like I always have a rhythm of sort of going. I will do ten pages, then have a break, um, do something for a little bit, and then go back and do another ten pages. So therefore, in total, it should only be three sections because if it's like a thirty-page script or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then sometimes I'll get lost. Uh, in in that and end up doing all of it in one go and I'm like oh look at the time <laughs> <laughs> oh look at the time but uh, hey at least the script's done <laughs> yeah yeah me, I just normally go at scripts like I just go at it and see mm. like sometimes I'll go at it and I can just write like a sentence and be like my brain's not functioning and then I'll get like restless legs and I need to pace and think <laughs> well, yeah 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 like, it, it's, that's it for me in scripting it's it's all or nothing if I sit that if if I think about doing it, I'll never get around to it. I have to force myself into a position where I'm like, I need to start writing it or yeah. I will, it'll never get finished. Yeah, and I'm I just have to start. That. So the beginning of the script is always the worst bit for me because I always go back and edit it all over again because it's it's always at the bit where my body's like, no. And then when I get into <laughs> it, I'm like, oh, I could actually do this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, today I hate scripting so much. It takes so much hard work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like so much like brain power and just like you know, just power in general, just to sit there and force yourself to write a script. <laughs> yeah, but for me, it's just kind of a case of I I have to uh, I'll make it up as I go. To be honest, and I yeah, think, oh, it's the I same with me. Like I write some and then I'll just write whatever I think, and mm. then I'll uh, I'll I'll send it off to like Meg. Meg will script read it and then she'll be like, "It's good." But <laughs> yeah. and then I'll be like, okay, I take that butts and I do uh, I work on some some alterations and all that. Like at the minute, like I'm working on a script uh, for series five, mm. um, which is towards the end of series five, it's episode eight. Um, mm. like I wrote the script and like I don't think it's great, so I've sent it to Meg and I've sent it to um Alan Rafferty as well. Mm. Uh, because he's got his yeah. ma- he's got his masters in writing and all that. So I was like, oh yeah, put it to yeah. Use. Alan's Alan's great. Is it? Has, has he talked to you about the Blake Snyder beat sheet yet? No, not yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait for that because that helped me massively. I've learned I learned it in uni, but Alan made it a lot clearer for me. It's, ah. it's like a it's like a step by step thing where you basically you put you, there's a generator online for it where you put down how many pages you want the script to be, and then it will break up like how many pages you've got for each section of your story oh wow that'd be useful um, yeah so it says like you know introduction or there's like one called opening image which is meant to be you know the opening of the film the first shot of the film that's meant to make that impact on you and you've got like a page to do it or something yeah 
Yeah. But yeah, it's good for that. Yeah, I'm but my, my plan is is that I'm going to get one draft off Meg, like one that she's edited, and then one off Alan. And then I'm going to mm. sort of make like the, the ultimate script using all three. Yeah. So we've sort of like, we've co written it in a way, but also script edited in a way. <laughs> the best the, the, the best of both worlds. Yeah, because that's why I'm like, you know, well, if I think it's crap and if I pull in good ideas from other people and we come together and make a really good one, uh, one final draft script, then I will be mm. happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I just looked at how long we've been recording for. <laughs> I mean, an... I, do, I did say I do talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was also just thinking, I remember we said at the beginning it would be 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, it was never going to be that. Is, <laughs> this is going to be a long podcast. <laughs> yeah, a very long podcast. I do apologise. I mean, at least it's not three hours. <laughs> All right. Do we do we have any um, closing remarks? <laughs> uh, um, happy happy seventh anniversary. <laughs> oh, yeah, happy happy seventh anniversary, dear DW 2012 yeah. series. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right then, I, I guess I guess we should probably wrap it up then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> wrap it up. Um, all right. Um, well, thank you, Luke. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very thank much. You, thank you for having me. <laughs> no worries. And uh, let's go back to me and Dan in the future. Hello, Connor and Dan from the future. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was me talking to Luke. Um, knowing um, how long it, the original recording is. You've probably joined us significantly further into the podcast <laughs> than usual. Usually, yep. it'd be about the, usually it'd be around the half an hour mark that we'd start again after the um, that's after the first segment. Uh, but I do believe that um, we spoke for a while, so we'll see how it comes out in the edit. But I thought let's do a bit of comments reading, shall we? Indeed. Um, unfortunately. Um, Dan, you don't have, don't don't have any new comments for today or this month. I I do, I do not. I, but it's, um, it's been a I'll, slow slow month for me. <laughs> no, sir. So I'll just read out a highlight of the comments I've got, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah. So um, over the course of the last month, we've had three more episodes of Resurrection come out. Uh, as of recording, I know there's one due tomorrow, uh, which is episode eleven. The part one of the finale so um that'll probably be read um next month so uh on episode eight the hidden race we had comments such as from michael cox excellent i love the way the series is slowly building up to something major what are those renegade time lords up to uh we've also had another comment from the episode going one of my favorite episodes i love the simplicity of this one and the inclusion of who the villain is such a great story and that was from infinite x um, we go on to episode 9, uh, where well, we have another comment from Michael Cox. It says, excellent performances from the cast. It's great to see Carly dealing with situations confidently. She's becoming a seasoned time traveller. I wonder if that special substance from Tempest could be uh, misused if fed into the wrong hands. Well, there's certainly scope to hear more about it in future episodes. And then we had episode 10 come out, of which um, we had a comment from someone called Angus Willis, who said, Great episode. Felt a lot like an episode of Turn Left. Yeah, thank you for all the comments, and thank you for everyone who supported the fourth series of Resurrection so far. As we've said to uh, constantly, um, it came at great cost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, um, it's definitely building towards something, as Michael said. So, stay mm. tuned. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, currently, myself and Anya are planning a Halloween audio. Uh, we're still in the midst of writing it. Uh, it depends on how it goes. It could come. Out, it could come out later in the year. We still. This is something we we're planning regardless if it comes out in Halloween or not. But it's, it's going to be a vampire story. It's going to contain a, a, a. It's going to contain. I I don't, I don't think we've ever had this villain in Doctor Who before. So I'm very excel- excited to introduce them. Hmm. <laughs> Are you saying who the villain is, or leaving it as a? Well, vampires and. Uh, uh, well, there you go. There you go. Then it's yeah, answered. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's vampires, like proper vampires. So that that it's been a story we've had uh, had in our heads for a while. We thought we'd do it uh, in audio whilst whilst uh, we're at the midst of the pandemic. So, uh, uh, there'll probably be a 
Halloween audio coming to Fresh Timeline at some point. Interesting. I look, I look forward to it, sir. Because I know how much you love when I bring up very last minute audio ideas, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you love them. You will love them. Yes, I always love it when a schedule I planned two years in advance gets thrown out of the window with a, a deadline of 20 days. Exactly, sir. Does the excitement not just, just kill you? It does kill me in a different way. <laughs> oh. He's he's ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember the last time the last time you did this, you said you'd never do it again. Ah. <laughs> well, first, I didn't mean to. You just it's just you spare the woman things. You, can't you cannot. Control. You cannot kill an idea. Once it's implanted inside your head. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit inception in that. Oh. But as well as um, the 7th anniversary special, all of October is based around Time Traveller, the uh, final act, which is, uh, the trailer's coming out on the 10th of October, followed by the series coming out on the 17th, the 17th of October, a week later, and finishing on the 28th, so this month is quite filled. As yeah. well as that, as well as that, just before it, the final episode of Resurrection uh, season four comes out, which I hope people like the twist when it comes. Well, in all fairness, by the time this comes out, this whole podcast come out, the twist would have actually been revealed. But nonetheless, I hope everyone's going to like the twist. There's a twist. <laughs> yes, there is a twist. Spoiler alert! There's a twist. Oh, there's always a twist. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. Um. So shall we uh, go and um, go to the segment where I spoke to Dave about? Hey, yeah, sure, of course. <laughs> if he must. <laughs> I was going to say. Well, did, did, did. <laughs> Overton Audios presents. Was this doubt at this point in the mission? What mission? We've got to break into Form Court building and use most of their weapons to change the past. I've lived in the future you're about to experience. I cannot be there. Keep all guns in them at all times. This isn't necessary. You killed five of my best men getting out of here. You are very, very important to us. Turn around and face me. I'm armed, Crimson. Robert, you always are. She needed support. She had me, her brother. It was in little James Whitfield. Oh my God, it can't be. I decided to involve myself in the enhanced program because we need more like them. We need to stop Thorncorp's plan to create enhanced individuals. Time Traveller, the final act, coming the 17th of October 2020 at 12pm. Hello, welcome back to the podcast, and I am here with Dave Edwards. Hello, Dave. Hello, Connor. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Yourself? I'm good, I'm good. Um, from what I understand, we've both been keeping busy. Oh yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite hectic, especially trying to get used to the new ways of living, to be honest. Um, oh god. Yeah, I've been, yeah. been keeping busy, got work coming in, so that's the most important thing. Mm, yeah, likewise. Been uh, st- still been going on site, everything like that, still keeping, still keeping busy there. Um, I think I'm starting to develop a sore throat. But um, that's based on the fact that, well, my stepmom thinks it's based on the fact that I had a very, very cold drink yesterday. It was like one of those from Costa. It was like a mango and passion fruit cooler. Oh, yeah, yeah. But um, it's also like one of those things where it's also like, what was it? Today's the 24th, so... 22nd was when technically the first day of autumn started, so I think it's also seasonal. Yeah, I mean the, the trouble the trouble over this time of year is um it's the cold and flu season, so it's quite it's going to be worrying very for... difficult to yeah difficult and worrying to determine have you got COVID nineteen or have you got a cold? But that's a whole different thing which don't really want to get how many into. People, how, yeah, how many more people are going to be self isolating now, thinking that they might have it, but it's actually a cold? 
Not that it's all mm. this is criticism on them. They've been trying to be. I think it's better to be wrong than, well, than actually have it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But how many more people are going to be self isolating in light of the flu season just to be safe? Because that's the thing I'm thinking right now. Right now, as of when we're recording this, it's Thursday. I don't have to be back mm. on site until Monday. So I'm. I, if I just make sure I nurse the throat, <laughs> then I'm sure yeah. I'll be much better by Monday. So that's a lucky thing for me and my work schedule that it's only come up yesterday after I got back from work. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a bonus for me. Um, but thus, uh, every, time I, every time now, I seem to have started a segment with someone. We talk in depth about um, about COVID. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, I was, it... like, it's difficult to avoid sometimes when you're starting just a conversation with someone yeah i mean it's it's literally what i mean it's either that or books on the news so it's, it's yeah. pretty much what's going on in the world at the moment but, um let's, let's, not, let's not get into politics shall we <laughs> no 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 <laughs> just for a, just like honestly imagine the comments on this podcast <laughs> Well, I, I did see online actually. There's there's a podcast which was very short lived, but um, it was called the Brexit Podcast, where every week they give new uh, updates on Brexit and discuss it with people who were like whether they were for or against it. Um, uh, it was very short. It was very short lived because I think social media got it cancelled because <laughs> I think they they had oh, certain so guests. They, no, but I, I, I think it was certain guests on who. Weren't going, mm. weren't saying yes to Brexit for purely political reasons, but more their own personal um, view on other people. If you know what I mean. Mm. I mean, social, so I think that's why social media. I, I tend to avoid social media as, as much as possible, to be honest. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I use it. I've, well, you've probably seen. I've, used, I've been using it mostly for Overton Audio's uh, mm. releases. I don't really post on my personal one. I don't know. I think I like I like social media because without it, lead. Oh, here we go. Good good segue. We'll use it now. Um, <laughs> social media. Without social media, you and I wouldn't have. Well, we have, we actually we've never met. <laughs> no, we've never actually met in person. We tried to actually meet up. Um, I remember it was summer summer twenty fifteen. We were going to meet up, and we were going and you were you were going to come along and for the for one of the filming days of Time Traveler. Yeah. But it just uh, fell. It I just fell apart. I don't really know what happened. To be honest, I don't no. Know. I think I think it was just schedules and money. Because mm, yeah. I know that you you live in the south of England, don't you? Yeah, in a very, a very very south. Well, not really. Yeah, and very, I live. Very south. I live in the. I live in the north area of the southeast. Mm. So just about um, what would it be? North northeast? Well, no, just east. <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about, but um, yeah. So as a result, we've actually known we've actually known each other for longer than that. We've known each other since two thousand and nine. Oh God, yeah, blimey, yeah. But that was that that was during the dark times, if you know what I mean. Yes, that's yeah. <laughs> we call it the dark times. Yeah, we try try yeah. to figure. I try to forget about that. A lot. Those those who are in the know will know it, but let's just say it's fan films of fan films. <laughs> And leave it at that. <laughs> leave it at that. Definitely leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, we we've known of each other because that's what we were kind of doing. We were doing that, and mm. we we were talking, but not often. And then we 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 were having gaps in our um in our uh, um communication. Um, I was making the original time traveler, but then I remember for series three, the original. Series three, like this is twenty eleven. You made a logo, which is actually the logo we used in the rebooted, reimagined time traveler with the big E. Yeah. So um, I'm glad we got to use that. But then it was in um, it was in new when the when the original fell through because literally all the cast hated doing it by this point. And they were just my mates, and they just were like, "Okay, we've we've done this favor enough now." Mm. Uh, <laughs> but um. <laughs> Well, then everyone sort of fell apart. We tried developing a fifth series, but nothing ever came of it because it was going to have Alan in it. And then this was discussed in last month's podcast. It was going to have Alan Rafferty as Milton Robert Black, which of course we were able to develop in Retribution. Mm-hmm. But um, it ne- it never worked because we had um, Alan lived too far away and it was too ambitious. So then we decided just to reboot it from scratch and 
make it make more sense. And then that's actually yeah. when you came in properly and you wrote a you a little YouTube comment. I don't remember. I don't know if it was the the um the two hundred cake uh YouTube channel oh, or not. God no no. I think it was um it it must have been my personal. One or yeah. uh, or quantum visuals. I don't really remember, yeah. but yeah. The only I reason why I remember that name. The only reason why I remember that name was because in Retribution episode one, when it has the fine the first act website, two hundred <laughs> had commented on it, and I I love I always love those little bits, those little um little like treats that we leave for ourselves to watch back later. And we're like, oh, I didn't know Dave. I didn't know Dave existed in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 days the the days of of early social media and YouTube where you basically make a completely different name from your real name because all the scare of you don't want people knowing your real name and blah blah blah. But now it's all about mm. but now it's all about influences and people knowing who you are and yeah. pretty much invading half your life in a way. But um, that's a whole different thing as well. So um, yeah, well that's the thing. I that's the thing actually. Funny story. When I first started doing YouTube, I was twelve years old. And I mean, think rightly so. My mum didn't really like me showing my face mm. because the internet, the internet was still new, and I was twelve. And you know, there aren't exactly, and not everyone out in the world is innocent. But so my mm. my videos were made up of me. I couldn't even make Doctor Who's like I wanted to anymore. I, was, I had to wear a Darth Vader mask, and my sister was wearing a Dracula mask, and we were just making little videos. Hmm. And then eventually, I just started ignoring her. Yeah, and I mean, then at, and then at a point, I think she forgot as well because she never brought it up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still remember my very first YouTube upload. Um, it was all the way back in twenty seven, not not twenty seventeen, two thousand and seven. Blimey, it's a long time ago. Um, uh, it was. Um, back then, when I think I think BBC One still do it, but they, they used to do this massive Christmas trailer to show what's coming up over Christmas. Oh, white, right. like like, and, like um, the, the one, the one, like my my favorite one was always the Runaway Bride one. Yeah. So so for this one, I had one of those like those flip cameras, those those point and shoot cameras, the really early day ones, <sighs> and I yeah. basically recorded the video which had the Voyage of the Damned. Um, Clips in it, and when I when I edited together using Windows Movie Maker, <laughs> oh my god! But they basically put put those clips together and then uploaded a Voyage of the Dam trailer using that. And to be honest, I'm surprised I still remember that. But it's it's my first proper. Well, do I've you, done a lot. Do of you remember? Before. Do you remember unregistered Hypercam too? Oh god, mate! The glory days of YouTube. Have, yeah. have YouTube has changed a lot since then. <laughs> yeah, well, now, now, for example, I found out I, a friend of mine wanted to show me a clip from a TV show, but I, it was on iPlayer. So I, I said, look, I'm, a, I'm at work. I can't open up BBC iPlayer, and that's a lot of data. So mm. what he did was he used screen recorder on his phone <laughs> and recorded <laughs> it in, like, high definition for me. And I'm like, <laughs> isn't that... Isn't, there's no law against that, but then again, the utilities have been given to you by the providers. I mean, I'm surprised you could record iPlayer yeah, on the you, phone. Yeah, you could screen. record an. Yeah, exactly. You could record an entire episode of like if you want to go on like, uh, like let's say you're like, watching like you know what was, what's that film called Line Line of Duty on BBC One. Mm. There's been a, like you could just go on that and record it on your phone. In fact, I think that's what some people actually do because the clips come out on YouTube so quickly for some things. <laughs> You're like they must be watching it online and just recording on their phone to mm, upload I it mean, so quickly. I mean, I mean, what when I try to take a screenshot from my Mac, like on Netflix or um, or iTunes, which is now Apple TV, it's black because of restrictions. So I'm surprised it works on iPlayer with Stream Recorder on an iPhone. So I've learned something yeah. there now. <laughs> yeah. But I just thought that was so weird in comparison to, you know, back in our day, we had to record the TV. Mm. Oh, that was... Uh, making yeah. me feel old, but you are older than me, but it still makes me feel old. But <laughs> How do you think I be... feel? <laughs> we used to record Have you things watched... on the video. Yeah, there's a gif of, um, you know, the Tim Allen film, The Santa Claus, when he uh, he shaves, and immediately all the hair just comes back. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's um, that's a gif that I use for when somebody went, "What's a VHS?" And I was like, "What?" Oh, gosh. <laughs> I recorded Doctor Who: The Infinite Quest that animation onto mm. VHS. <laughs> oh my god! I gave it to a friend. Well, don't really talk to her anymore. But uh, should I say neighbour? <laughs> One more thing about VHS is I hate it when you eject it and you pull it out and then you hear the crunching sound of the tape caught in the machine. Oh and then God. you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Never yeah. knew how it happened, but it used to happen and it used to be devastating because you know either you're going to be recover that or not funny story about a vhs my uh when we when we used to rent videos uh before streaming <laughs> oh my god i just feel so old um <laughs> my mum accidentally recorded an episode of eastenders over a film oh no <laughs> um and she didn't she didn't realize until we took back the video nobody ever complained by the way but um she only realised it when she was looking for the VHS that she'd recorded it on, and then she realised that it was the film. <laughs> I don't know what the film was, but I can only just imagine that in the middle, of, like somebody who had rented it was, was going to have like a nice romantic night in or something, whatever film it was. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then there's just like, like a really dramatic moment, and then... <laughs> Like what? Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, back to time traveller. <laughs> yes, that, that, that so, is the main reason why we're on, we're doing yeah. this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we actually started off on. So we started talking at the beginning of 2014, having mm. known each other sort of more acquaintances back then, and yeah. we we were talking about how we were going to you know make it and everything and what we wanted to do differently. We originally we we because Time Traveler was like I was saying earlier, it was basically a fan film of a fan film. We wanted to make sure that it stood on its own two feet. Yeah, because plus the concept, it's the concept itself. Not to not to ruin selling it to anybody. Um, the concept's not exactly original. It's been done plenty of times. Um, mm. but you know, someone goes back in time to stop something from happening. But I like to think that as we've gone along and developed individual characters. Um, the story has been a mixture of different things and thus, you know, becomes different. Yeah. As a result. So and obviously we've we've done three we've done three visual series and then uh, so far as of releasing the third one is about to come out, although that's not how much it is currently. <laughs> it's more than that right now. But we've <laughs> basically we've done a lot of content but we've it, uh, the audios that we've been doing it was something I think was it I think it was something that I came to you about, wasn't it? Uh yes. Yeah. I think it was, yeah, I was, I think just... it was last year you came to me? Or was it the year before? I don't know your It might have been it might have been the year of... before. Yeah, it, mm. it it was the year before because in May last year was when twenty fourteen was recording. And I know that because there was a little bit of a gap again when we between, you know, starting the audios and then I think you got super busy with work. Yeah. So yeah, as a result, cause... there was another gap, and then you came back from the work, and I was halfway through. I think we'd written twenty fifteen, or something, or maybe we'd written, or maybe I hadn't written the last episode, but we were. We you were definitely there at the end of the twenty fifteen uh, volume, and I remember you you were listening to episodes to give notes and everything by then. Yeah. twenty fourteen was definitely done, just me. Yeah, because um, I think it was um. I was in the middle of um of um doing uh, FDM uh, business I had with a friend, and then you came mm. to me I think to uh, to explain the idea, and I sort of said, basically giving you your ble- your blessing to go ahead, and when I can jump in, I jump in, and then yeah. uh, and then I was finally able to jump in after you finished recording 2015 which was a perfect time because you needed me to do some certain lines for a certain character yeah. which I play so <laughs> yes it was good timing like, on Dave. that part 
Yeah. It, I mean, it was only one line, but it was a very particular line. Because that, that, that was a worry, because it was coming to a point where I, I was trying to figure out, like, if you had said that you didn't want to do it, knowing me, I probably would have still wanted to do it in some shape or form. But then, mm. but then there was, like, thinking, so that means I can't have Dave's character in it at all. And that creates problems. <laughs> yeah, very big problems. <laughs> it it very much limits what we can do <laughs> mm. but um we would have found a way around it either way cuz there was a thought about having your character in 2014 anyway just as like because he i don't think he really ever appears no he you know, he's, he's uh, the, the good main fan doesn't appear at all in 2014 he's he's mentioned by fawn but there's no yeah audible dialogue between fawn and good no but only those little bits of text i remember when we were planning it when we were when, when we'd finished filming series one of the visuals um at that point you you had played it that you you had, you had played that character mm-hmm. or, or computer or whatever you want to say but um at that point you, you'd played that and we were looking into how we were going to do series two and we kind of we we both agreed that at that point you were you were going to be in it. So yeah. when when you were doing the visual effects for it, you would add little things in there to allude to yourself. <laughs> so like when they're using the Thorncourt modulator because it runs on a computer system, it was running on like an earlier version. Or well, I say an earlier version. It's an earlier version of the grid mainframe from the future, but technically a much further advanced version of the grid mainframe mm. the time he was in. <laughs> I mean, a little Easter egg um, about uh, uh, I think it was in season one, episode one, where James shows Leo um, his form court modulator. It wasn't called that back then either. Um, the, the, the hologram. It says in the very bottom right. I think it says it says connected. I think to, that's one I'm thinking of. Yeah, it says says yeah. connected to a particular server. And in episode one, when that visual effect was done. Um, yeah, that it basically said some random numbers, and then when we have a flashback to, I don't remember when the flashback was. Was it season two? We had a flashback to it. Yes, yes, I believe, yes. I believe, I believe it was when you were talking to me, or it was in Deception. I think you know when I yes. when I actually saw saw you, and then you were like, "Hello, Britain." <laughs> <laughs> Yes. This yeah, is yeah. your emperor. <laughs> <laughs> it, it definitely was episode two now, yeah. And we basically showed that clip again, and I went back and added connected to the grid mainframe to sort of. Oh, okay. So, um, to sort of reconnect, because the grid mainframe, the idea behind that really came in during the editing of season one rather than in any pre production or production. It was no, yeah, exactly. Originally, originally, the villain was. Well, originally, that's actually one of my biggest regrets, and I wish I kind of wish that maybe in hindsight we'd done this for 2014, which was mm. to have more of Mister to have more of Mister Stevens. Yeah, because he's the he's technically the bad guy from Dataline, and he's actually only in episodes two and six, and it's a six episode series. Was was he in only two? Blimey! I'm... Oh no, no, I think he was. I think he was in one and two. And six. He yeah. definitely wasn't in the middle. And in episode mm. five was the episode where basically the whole area had to be evacuated, so he definitely wasn't there. So, well, yeah. so he was in half the series, but he didn't really have any screen time from that. And episode one was probably episode one was probably his largest amount. Mm. God knows why uh, Scott decided to wear purple. <laughs> but I kind of wish that maybe, maybe I don't know, uh, I kind of wish that you know we had found a way to have him a bit more in the audios. But I don't know mm. if it would have affected continuity a bit too much. Because he, he couldn't meet anyone. He couldn't meet the main characters. You know? No, yeah, he was, he was a very um, isolated character, in a sense. Mm. But in a way, he was also being controlled by the people who, not like a literal, like how a robot is controlled, but controlled by his bosses, who we do then see in series two. So in a way, you could argue yeah. that he's just a pawn. Yeah, so 
Final Act is coming out in October. Well, this will be released in October, but the trailer is coming out on the 10th of October, followed by the actual episode, or the first episode, on the 17th. And I think, I think it carries on until it's, it's, towards it's the bi- end of October. It's, it's bi-weekly, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. And let me look at, I've got my little schedule here, let me have a little look. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, it finishes on the 28th of October, so that's 11 days of it being currently released or whatever. But, um, yeah, so I'm quite happy with how the final act turned out, because I know that we, we were both a little bit... Well, we, we, who I think we, there was a little bit of unsurety, wasn't there? Um, yeah. God, I'm not trying to remember... When, well, when, there was obviously there was there was some there were some characters. I think there's only one to be honest, but there's some characters who have been recast from the original visuals. Mm. Um, but that's genuinely just an unfortunate side effect of when we because when we recorded this, it was before any notion of a lockdown. It was way before coronavirus was even on the radar when we when this was recorded. Because yeah. we did, we did, we did twenty fifteen in uh, the summer, I think, of last year. Mm-hmm. And then the final act came along very soon after. Yeah. It's, 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 been, um, ready. it's been ready yeah. for quite some time. Connor is very much ahead in terms of yeah, so, audio schedules. Well, it's because it, it's, it's cause it, I, I have to be because I'm, I'm busy with work. Mm. So when I wasn't so busy with work, I just worked on this and then got myself to a position where I was like, okay, I can cruise along <laughs> for a little bit. Mm. But um, yeah, I'm always getting worried about schedules. Like, it's taken about two months to do what a recording for a series coming out in May next year. But uh, knowing I don't often have a lot of time to edit, and knowing that you know we've got a million things ongoing, I'm just like, please hurry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm 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 quite happy with how the audios have turned out so far. Wait, well, I don't think necessarily it's a spoiler here, but we we finished all of the visual, not the visual. We finished all of the audio audios that lead up to the end of the visual series now, so we're actually up to date. Yeah. Um, obviously, like I've constantly said when people have asked me, and I've mentioned the podcast before, we're just going to see how it does for the next couple of volumes that are being released and, you know, see how people are liking it. So far, every, so far, from what I've heard, a lot of people are enjoying it. We've got, we've got like, the um, some of the fans who watched it back in the day. I said back in the day, it was, like, three years ago. <laughs> when that when they when they watched yeah. it, they watched it. Then they've come back and found it again, and are enjoying the expansion because of audio. The only thing you have to worry about is the cost of talent, not mm. running along to locations and travel, etc. So it, it's a lot cheaper, and you can do anything. Yeah, I mean the the, the main the main purposes of the anthology series is to mainly fill in some gaps and sort of clarify some certain things. Um, we, we we created mm. this um, timeline document. Um, oh yes, one of the multiple timeline documents we've made, um, and we sort and we sort yeah. of use that to sort of to sort of help create these anthology audios. And with the final act, we wanted to expand more on sort of the journey of James and Noah, and how that mm. so friendship um, develops. Yeah, I know. I'm committed. James is... well, he's young. That's no excuse. If he's not ready, then we'll leave him behind. I'm not leaving him behind, Nathan. You forget. I know why they call you Agent Nathan. Excuse me? Thorncorp agent, right? Much like me and James. That's in the past. But you were still one of them. Yeah, because we had, um... what did we have? In the visual series, in the series one finale, there were some flashbacks to when they all went back in time but um though there was you know we we I, 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 there was that scene where um they sort of stop for a little bit having walked for miles and yeah. they just talk and what's nice is i, th- I think what's also quite in- quite interesting about that scene not to you know blow my own trumpet here but I like the fact that when you watch it they're not just being expositional they're just talking about things that have been going on Mm. And it just makes you a little bit more intrigued to 
know kind of what what this is what their lives were like, but we've got no context for it. Are you sure you put this into consideration? You put any thought into it? Yes, of course I have. Once we get there, I'm never going to see my sister again. You won't see her again either. Think of all the times you could have had together. We'll be coming back. Don't worry, Crimson. We are not abandoning Zoe. Don't worry. I wouldn't do that to her. Or you. We'll contact her once we reach the capital. So as a result, I think that's what, why we've made it in the end. It's just to sort of tie up those bits. And as well as that, with the with the fact that the end of series two ends with it being a closed loop. Mm -hmm. What's weird is as the volume goes along, it starts at the end of series two and ends at the beginning of series one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sort of, I think, but I, it, you know, it, 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 it's just really, really odd. But it, it's a nice sort of closed, closed loop type thing where, and there's not really the the, word, the weirdest thing too. There's not really you can't you can't do a listening order for this because no, you have I to, mean, you know, you'll it's, have it's, to split up the the episodes of the final act, which of course you need to listen to them all together, really. But because it's mm -hmm. technically so wibbly wobbly. I mean, telling a, telling a series about time travel and basically ordering things, it gets, it gets quite difficult, and it is a bit wibbly-wobbly. Um, mm. Especially during the visual series. There's a lot of flashbacks in Season 2 regarding the journey of the final act between Leo and um, Agent Nathan. And, yeah. and in this upcoming audio volume, a special volume of the final act, there's one mystery which has always bugged me since season one is how did Na Agent Nathan really get killed? Was it the tree or was it something else? You find out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, ba so basically, for, um, for those who not might not be in the know, um, in the visual series Nathan Nathan dies in the flashback so there you go. You'll know mm. not to get too attached. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, essentially there was a scene where he, there's an explosion behind them they get not they get knocked over one act, one one guy who stood next to Nathan survives mm. but Nathan <laughs> himself is killed despite them both being stood next to each other when the explosion went off um but the key difference is uh the character who doesn't die he he basically jumps and does a like kind of a roll on the ground to roll away and he gets up fine Nathan hits a tree on his way down <laughs> so the the question was we had, which was, did the tree kill him, or was it something else? And we've basically answered that. Yeah, and I've forgotten uh, about that joke. <laughs> it's been it's been a internal gag for quite some time. It's um, killed yeah. by a tree, but um, you get to find out what really <laughs> happened. And there's a really interesting character twist in the final act. Um, mm. Yes, but of course you have to. Listen to listen to the final act when that comes out. Indeed, throughout there'll be a uh, lot of interesting things about the characters that have already been established. Mm. Like, for example, I don't know. If you, I don't know. Sorry, I've got. I live on a farm, so <laughs> they've decided to come by with a forklift outside the house right now. <laughs> I'm, I know I usually denoise the audio, but I don't know if this will survive. <laughs> <laughs> so I might start to sound like I'm underwater at one point or not. I don't know, but um, so we'll we'll try and wrap this up now. Um, so yeah, but there are there are some characters like um, it's fairly known in the visual series that James and Zoe had a relationship, and mm. Zoe was Noah's sister. So the fact that you know James and Noah meet with to to save Noah's sister, and then James goes on to have a relationship with her. It gets a little bit... I don't know if... I suppose the word is domestic a little bit, isn't it? But it's yeah. also... It also shows, like... Because that was something I think we asked one another, which was, how was Noah all right with that? Mm. He was, he'd was he been looking for his sister for, for years, and then someone offers to help him. As soon as she's saved, you know, he gets busy with her. You know, it's like, well, hang on. <laughs> like, you know... Let us like s settle back again, don't not what the hell. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so there's there were those little elements, and as well as that, you know, we mentioned that Nathan and Bran are old friends, 
but yet mm. they actually barely show any screen time together in the visual series. So we make sure that we get that. And yeah. they actually, and I'm really happy with how that turned out because the way that Ted and uh, Jake play the characters, um, they it there is a sense of like time. If you know what I mean, like there's a history. Nathan, Christ, what the hell? I needed to talk to you sooner. So you broke into the cabin to speak to me? Obviously. How are you? Good, yeah, yeah. I'm good. You? What's happening? I'm alive. That's what matters. I'm by myself now. Oh. And I really, I really like that. Because, of, like, for those of you who do not know as well, in the original Time Traveler that I made, um, there was... Well, I, I originally played Agent Nathan, and, well, I think Ted, Ted, Ted stayed in the role. So yes, it was yeah. it was it was nice to be able to develop it properly, but then also know that it's not me. So it's like reimagined and different and purer in that way. Mm. So uh, yeah, but yeah, you can uh, as well, when when this comes out, this uh, podcast, this is going to be out on the seventh of October. So in um, three days, the trailer is going to be coming out. I'm following the week after, so ten days from now will be when episode one comes out, and that will be going all the way through the month. Um, which is nice. So um, yes, thank you for thank you for listening to this. And I'll, um, Dave, have you enjoyed yourself? Yes, it's it's been a pleasure to chat with you, Connor. Oh, thank you. So um, I uh, pass us off back to the rest of the podcast. Farewell. Farewell. And there we go. There's that segment that I did with Dave again. That one it was about half an hour of recording. So who knows when we popped up again, Dan? Yeah, but um, yeah, that um, I'm very excited for Time Traveler: The Final Act. It's um, in- it's introducing origins of a character that we didn't really see before. I don't want to reiterate what I said during that, but I- I'm excited for it for that for that reason. Uh, so am I. Um, I've always been interested in sort of like the or- like the origins of these characters. So it's uh, so I'm very excited to finally hear them. Mm. And what's um, well going a bit off subject here, but would you like to know an interesting um, fact about the uh, podcast, this month's podcast? What is the interesting fact about this month's podcast, sir? Um, everything for the podcast has been recorded at night. Oh, really? So your conversation with Dave and Luke has all been recorded. Oh, oh, you mean just our recording? No, everything. Everything at everything night. Everything that you were just listing, yeah, it was at night. If anyone if anyone notices a sort of disjointedness with conversation, it's based on the fact that it, an entire like we are within well this but it is the end of the day. There is no day, but when we because because when we usually record this down, it's like midday or one or two. Yeah, and I don't so, and I usually don't have a cold. Not too. So and I'm recovering from one. So a bit difficult, but nonetheless, it's about it's, it's 10 p.m. as of this recording, and I don't know about you, Dan. A bit late. I think it's time to go to bed. It is, especially since we got we both got work. Yep. So um, we <laughs> bid everyone a farewell. It's a odd way to end the podcast. Sorry, we've got to go. We've got work in the morning. <laughs> Whilst this is going to be coming out at midday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, ha- have a have a good day to all and a uh, good night to us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. All right. Bye bye. Uh, see you next month. See you next month.